Hi guys, um, it's going to be a bit of a change of pace today um, for my normal videos. I'm going to be working outdoors because we've got some great weather here in the UK. Um, so I'm just going to swap the camera around so you guys can see what I'm looking at. So I'm currently standing kind of quite near Chatsworth in the Peak District, um, if any of you know that area. Um, and I've got a, a sort of sunset going on ahead of me, um, which is going to be a slightly tricky piece to paint, but we'll see how it goes. Um, you can see I've got my uh, yellow yellow primed panel um, on my little easel and then on the easel you can see all my colours so I've got a little bit of medium there as well. So I've got some uh, ivory black, ultramarine blue, Prussian blue, alizarin crimson, burnt umber, raw umber, yellow ochre, cad yellow, lemon yellow and white. I probably won't be using all of those. Um, just switching to a slightly closer view so you guys can see a bit, a bit better uh, what I'm actually painting. Um, I'm going to get started. We've not got lots of time if you're working at this time of day, so <clears throat> I've come out at um, it's about 8.30 actually because uh, I, I always prefer, if I can, to paint uh, sort of sunsets rather than bright, bright light during the day. <clears throat> but pretty much any scene is going to be interesting to paint especially in this kind of weather so even though it's quite late at night for the UK it's pretty warm which is nice so I'm just mapping out my horizon you can sort of see in the background there I've got that little hill that pops up when I do landscapes I'm not too kind of fussed about them being absolutely perfect in terms of um, accuracy and so on so that's, that's one of those trees that we can see in the distance I'm just going to Rub in one of the other ones. And then we've got another one next to that, about the same height. So I'm just working in burnt umber to begin with, um, just to map everything out. It's not too much more really. We've got the little bit of the path that we want to see. <clears throat> kind of peeking up here. That kind of cuts across. Is out near where I'm standing. So this is a lot closer to where I'm standing. So one of the reasons I, I kind of picked this spot is I was walking around for a bit in the different bits of the fields and it's got kind of like middle ground, foreground and background interest. So it's got the little bit of that hill in the background over there. Um, it's got the these trees in the middle ground. It's got these undulating Undulating, undulating hills that we're looking at. So I've set myself a reasonably tricky task. Um, I was hoping to actually get started a bit earlier than this, but it took me a while to find somewhere that I liked. Um, I'm always a little bit fussy when I'm out landscape painting. So. That's pretty much like as <laughs> that's as much information as I need to to actually get started with the piece. Um, so the next thing I want to do is start figuring out some colours. So I'm going to paint the sky in first because the sky is going to disappear pretty quickly. So I want to figure out what colour are my clouds going to be. My starting point I always use this as a starting point is actually just black and white, which you wouldn't think of, but it's quite a, a greyish combination, black and white and often works quite well. Oh, sorry, a bluish combination, not greyish. It's obviously greyish, but it's it often ends up bluer than you would expect. So you can sort of see... That's quite a nice colour. Probably alter a little bit as it goes closer to the highlight in the sky. Um, maybe I'll lighten it off a little bit more, so a bit more white in that mixture. So 
So I'm going to say roughly this color on this side of the piece. As it moves in towards the center, we're going to have to do a little bit of adjustment, adjusting it um, in order to get the transition into the, um, the color of the sun as it's setting. Which is sort of changing minute by minute, so. Try not to work too slowly doing this. But I am bearing in mind if I am. Um, I'm happy with my color when I first start it. When I first get it in. I'm not gonna have to go back and touch it. And that's something I always sort of think about when I'm doing landscape painting. So it's also this kind of grayish color on the other side of where the sunset is. So I can <coughs> try to get that in a bit quicker. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to mix a little bit of alizarin crimson into the these greys as it moves towards the central section, which is where the, the gold sky is going to be. That's because I want to start kind of preparing a transition into a gold colour, and if I go from the directly from this grey colour more of an orange. Uh, we would end up with something that's green because we're basically bl blending a blue and blue into a yellow which would mix into a green. So we're using the, the alizarin crimson mixture as a bit of a sort of transition here. very center we want it to go to our sort of pure white color.
mixing a little bit more alizarin and crimson into this sort of transitional section. I'm blending those slightly. Oh, that's looking not too bad. The other place I'm gonna just pop some a brighter color that isn't quite a uh, quite as yellow is up here. We've got a bit of the uh, sky behind showing through. Be a little bit bright too, which is kind of nice. So, just going to get a bit more of my cadmium yellow. to intensify the yellow as it kind of goes in and meets that white color. Yes, that's not too bad, I think, for the for the sky. The skies are always really tricky, regardless, kind of what what time of day. This is slightly trickier just because it's changing a lot um, because of the light fading. But if it was earlier in the day and you had clouds, it would be tricky as well. So, skies are always always a tough one. Um, but my kind of general approach with them is usually to try to just as much as possible get them down in a sort of single pass so you're not um, spending too long on them. You just kind of get, get what you can. So like here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave this in a moment. Um, yeah, that's all right. So the next thing is going to start mixing up some greens. And they're mostly going to be pretty dark greens, so I'm going to go for a bit of Prussian blue, burnt umber, <coughs> and a little bit of cad yellow for this tree up here in the background, which is pretty dark. going to use the same the same sort of darkish color for all three of those trees up there this one I'm going to try to just kind of fleck a little bit give it a slightly different texture same for the one behind and then mix up a, a slightly lighter green for the front part of it So the foreground then is going to be largely sort of greenish too. I'm going to go a little bit lighter with that. So a bit of a sort of lighter green is what we're after.
and a little bit washier as well. So I'm using a bit more medium. So our foreground greens are going to be a little bit lighter. I've just mixed up something with a bit more um, lemon yellow and Prussian blue, which is often quite a good combo for, for lighter greens. Cad yellow mixed in there as well. So the only place I'm kind of leaving blank in the uh, foreground are the places where we're going to be putting some some of those paths in as well. But yeah, you can see sort of how quickly I'm working. So landscapes are a really good kind of subject to work on if you want to loosen up, sort of forces you to loosen up, um, definitely. So you're a little bit kind of paler and blue with some of these greens going traveling backwards to clear up on this hillside which is a bit further away maybe not quite that extreme a bit more color back into it that's better Just patching in some of those more yellow greens that I see. In the distance. Also got some kind of pinky purple colours, so let's let's get some of those in as well. They're nice. So now that we've got <coughs> everything in, you can sort of see see that path emerging, which is nice. So I'm just going to fill a few more of these gaps in here and there in the moors. And then, where are you on? About 20 minutes. So we're going to work for about half an hour and then stop as a kind of natural point. Put. So there's a little bit of a separation in the path here, which is a nice little detail. Some kind of grass cutting across it. And scrubbing all the texture. So the scrubbing just still kind of allows some of the, the background to show through that kind of yellow underpainting 
which kind of breaks the color a little bit. Can be nice. And we can also do it, use it to kind of just, yeah, just kind of irregularize the background, which, which can work quite well. So the, just about there with these trees, I'm just going to adjust the color slightly. Maybe merge those two. They're not actually merged in reality, but just to kind of unify that section. Interior of that back tree a little bit darker as well. Yeah, that's looking all right. So then we want to up a kind of neutral color. I'm going to use some raw umber and white. Neutral color for the path. So something a bit more muted than the, the yellow is. And it's going to be slightly, going to make it a little bit darker where it's sloping away from the light. as it crests the hill. So one of the final things I want to do is now put a little bit of a kind of indent for where the grass is cutting back. So sort of relative to the light.
I'm just going to lay in some slightly lighter, kind of paler greens up at the sky edge. So that just separates the background from the, the foreground, which is often helpful. Yeah, we're starting to dip a little bit in light that we've got available to kind of see what's going on. Take a little bit of pure burnt umber just to make some of the shadows a bit darker. Add a few extra shadows here and there in the foreground. So I'm just going to soften the edge here as the, the bank slopes down. So yeah, I think that's, that's in a pretty good position, we can call it a day. I'm just going into that unnecessarily fiddling with stuff stage so i'll probably stop in a sec um but yeah hopefully you guys can make it out in this lovely weather in the uk um and anywhere else that has good weather too which is probably a lot of places relative to the uk um but yeah at the moment this summer's been really good for landscape painting so if you guys get out and you make any paintings be sure to share them um Hopefully this has been an interesting little video for you to watch. And if you have any questions about it, about any of the process, stuff that I've used, um, any suggestions for other, other things to watch for learning about landscape painting, feel free to message too. Um, so yeah, that's it. And Hopefully you guys enjoyed this, and that's it for me.